Good morning, welcome to another video. It's about 9.30 now, as you can see, down the canal. This is the South Stratford. Stratford South? I can never remember which way around it is. South Stratford, I think. <laughs> and I've come out to do a little bit of Xander fishing this morning. I've got a couple of hours free, so I thought we'll nip to the local canal and have a little go. So, that being that, here we are. I've come to a, a stretch that's sometimes good for a bite. Hopefully it will be today. Now, I've had a bit of a change up since the last video, which was two videos ago, on my um, Xander setup, or more, I should say, the rods I'm using. What I've done is brought these little fellas with me. I've got a couple of these. These are Dower Black Widow EXT 9-foot rods. Perfect for this sort of thing. I was finding my 12-footers were a little bit long last time out. So, I bought these, and... As you can see, they fold down nice and small, and as the EXT suggests, they extend up to nine foot. So we've got a nice nine foot rod and they're nice compact to carry around. Business end, very easy float ledgering for these canals under this canal. The canals around here, they're only four foot deep down the track, two foot deep on either side. So what we've got is um, a five gram Zeppler float there. That will slide up and down, stopped by a stop knot, which I can adjust the depth very easily. Drill bullet will go on the bottom. A wire trace made from Drennan Soft Strand. And that's just tied knotless knot style with a blob of glue onto a single circle hook. Now, if you want to see how I tie these traces up, I do like a single circle hook. I'll, uh, I'll link you into a video up there. You can go and have a look how I tie these up. I'll explain it's much easier to show you at home on a table than uh, next to the canal. Right, we've got some roach and some smelters bait, and it's as simple as that. We're gonna do a little bit of cover along here. There's a little bit along here, a little bit further up. There's a bit of um, aerated water where the um, there's a lock bypass just above us. So we'll just have a crack for a couple of hours, see what we can catch. I think that's probably enough waffle. We'll get on. We'll keep on our toes. Shouldn't take too long to get a bite. If there's hungry fish about, certainly 10 or 15 minutes, and we'll perhaps leapfrog the rods along, doing different bits of cover, and we'll move along the canal. Right, let's get cracking. Both rods are identical. Actually, this has got a slightly different float on it, but it's a five gram one. I'm just gonna lip hook a roach. Drop it out there. Get it nice and close to the cover, but not too close. That's perfect. That's it. The float is half cocked, meaning we are on the bottom. What I like to do is, is have the... Oh, is that me? It is me. What I like to do is have the, the, um, the weight so that it's too heavy for the float. That way, if you're fishing under depth off the bottom, then obviously the float will go under, so you know to adjust it. Right, I'm just gonna change the trace on this other rod, because it's looking a bit old and manky. And then we'll get this one in as well. Like right, I so say, in the meantime, we're fishing. We'll put one rod on roach, one rod on smelt, I think. Hopefully we can have a few fish. Not the biggest fish in the world in this stretch, quite often, but um, as I say, it's nice and handy. I only had a couple of hours spare, so suits suits things perfectly. I'm gonna get out on the canals and do a bit of silvers fishing as well at some point. I didn't fancy that this morning, purely because I thought there'd be boats moving. However, looking at this canal, it's not moving at all. So as soon as the boats start moving, even if they're not on the the particular stretch you're on. Once they lock, start opening the locks, either downstream or upstream, it doesn't really matter. Then obviously the water starts moving between the stretches and it just starts, all starts trundling along. And I thought, as I say, I thought there'd be some boats moving this morning. But nothing yet, as it, as it turns out. does often help with the Xander fishing, but when you're, when you're float fishing sort of over the other side in sort of that much water, boat goes through, all your bait's just gone everywhere. 
to kind of start again so I to keep, keep restarting the swim. When the boats get regular, I mean, it's just, well, it's just a waste of time. However, with this sort of fishing, you can sort of disturb the fish a bit, get them moving. I did find last time out, which was sort of best part of a week ago, that twitching the baits really helped. So we'll, we'll leave them in place for a few minutes and give them a little twitch. Last time they seemed to be just sort of sitting there. I've got the feeling the Zandal kind of sitting there and not really paying much attention. I'm just sort of almost looking at the baits. And once you give them a twitch, it was like, oh, it's getting away. I've got to have it. It's a little bit deeper. It's just nice and easy to change the depth just with these sliding stop knots. Ideally, I just want the float to lie flat, be sort of almost dead depth, but lie flat. Like that, that's better. I'm sure there'll be some fish hanging about under there. It's about the, the biggest bit of cover along here. Sort of one of them anyway. There's a nice bit along there as well, a little bit further. We'll give this a few minutes yet and perhaps over towards that one as well. Early day today. A little bit of a bite, but fairly mild, fairly pleasant, no wind. Fairly coloured this canal as usual. It's probably only that much visibility, something like that, so to rely on a bit of smell. The puncture these baits, get the smell out. Also, I've cut the sm um, smell in half because it's quite a big bait. That's so I'm going to keep twitching these baits. I definitely worked the other day. I was sort of grabbing them as soon as I twitched, <laughs> grabbing them the other day. You see how deep they are from the top thing, maybe three foot if that. And that's in the track. I just dragged that and dragged that down in the, into the track. Get okay, that's better. It's lying flat again as well. Right, come on fishies. Got some nice fresh bait as well this time. <laughs> Bought some more bait. So right skanky old horrible stuff I dragged out the bottom of the freezer last time. With some uh, down the bottom with the old bits of peas and sweet corn and the old sausage. <laughs> right, time for a move I think. We'll twitch these baits a bit as we bring them in. There's not a lot happening there. We'll get on our toes. There's a lot of cover to our right, which we can have a go at. We're just gonna have 10, 15 minutes down by that big bush, whatever it is down there. Right, we're by the lock now and the lock overflow, as you can see. Just wondering if a bit of movement in the water might help us. I'm going to put one by this bit of cover, I think. Perhaps we'll try one over by the lock mouth over there by the wall and then we'll have a cast around. Let's try that. We'll try here for a minute actually first and then we'll we'll try over there in a minute. Lovely bit of cover there. That bramble bush, it goes quite a long way back. This is where it's good to have that nice decent weight on the bottom just to hold these floats in place. It's the same for uh, you know, when the boats are moving, just anchors the float in place. Lovely spot that is over there. Just where that current is, just off on the edge of the current where there's cover as well. That looks cracking spot that does. 
This one I might move down there in a minute and sort of tuck it up underneath the cover a little bit. We're not doing very well, are we? At the moment. I blame the lack of boats. If I'd have come out today with a float rod and some ground bait and some bread and some maggots, they'd have been up and down up and down the boats. Because I want a boat. Way. Cover over there. I can tuck this under. Come on, fishes. Well, we've been at it an hour without any indication at all. We'll have five minutes more here and then we'll get a little bit further along and then we'll have a wander down the stretch. I think these fish are just laid up and staff asleep. All right, I think we've got a take on this one. It's very much like it. It's sort of cocked and then it, yes, we have... <laughs> It cocked and it's bobbing away. Look, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Definitely got a bit of activity on this one. There it goes. Gone. Right, circle hooks. So just wind down into the fish. There we go. We're in. Fab. A take, finally. It's no monster. <laughs> But it's a fish, nonetheless. <laughs> it's Xander, it's a target species. <laughs> Hopefully you can see him down there. As I say, no monster at all, but <laughs> not very happy. Baden. That'll do for starters. Cracking. Well, there we are. <laughs> Bristling youngster. Absolutely fantastic. Right. We'll get another bait in there. I can't imagine he's over there on his own. <laughs> not for a minute. Fantastic. That one's not done anything. We'll give that another five as well. We'll move that over. He's that sort of size where he'll be in a, in a shoal, I would think. Definitely worth another go over there. Let's tuck this in underneath there. That's it. Very shallow over there. But, uh, if they're there, they're there. This one's not done anything. I think we'll move it. As I say, if there's one of that size over here, I would... I would think there's probably some more. Might even get his big brother. Well, nothing else going on there. I think we'll have them move a bit further down. Just cover further down here. We'll, we'll uh, pull these floats in and we'll move to this cover just a bit further along, I think. In fact, we could leapfrog them down, couldn't we? Let's move down just 10 metres. <clears throat> I 
I think we'll leapfrog these bits of cover now. We'll keep moving, keep on the move. I don't think it should take too long as and when we drop on a fish. All right, we're in. I've got a take on this one. I was just watching it. <laughs> it's just cocked. <laughs> Certainly something going on. Yeah, we've got a take on that one, definitely. It's gone. Yeah, there we go. The schoolie, I think. The feel of it. A great scrap though. <laughs> A cracking scrap. Of course I could chub trying to get under my feet. Fantastic. Cracking stuff. As I say, not a big one again. It's a circle hook in the corner of the mouth, as it should be. Nice and easy to pop out. There we are. <laughs> he's very lively. <laughs> we'll try and have a look at him. But he's, uh, he's going crazy. How's about that? <laughs> Another little schoolie. Fantastic. That's wonderful, we're having a bit of sport at least. Cracking. Right, let's see if we can have another one. Right, time for a bit of a move, I think. We've sort of gone all the way up there, come all the way back to where we started. We'll head on down the other way. I've just bumped into a law guy actually. He's only just started, he's just done a bit we sort of walked past earlier, so. We'll work off down that way, I think. His lure might have woke the fish up. Still no boats. It's a lovely day, and we'll have to set the jumper off, I think. Well, we came out for two hours. We've had two and a half hours. The, uh, the first boat of the day is just coming along so i think i'm gonna unfortunately use that as my cue to go i did only tend on being a couple of hours and as i say we've been two and a half so i can't moan these rods have acquitted themselves well well i'm kicking around for a while but uh just suddenly occurred to me last time when we were doing this that those 12 footers were a bit long. I mean, admittedly, they'd been okay here. There's not really any overhead cover, but um, yeah, they've been cracking and they fold down lovely and small as well, which is, which is perfect. So that's me done. We've had perhaps two and a half hours down here now and uh, for those two fish, so I'm happy with that, happy to have caught. As I say, it's a very local stretch to me, so I can always nip along here and there's lots of other places to explore. I fancied coming here because I thought it probably good for a couple of bites, although not usually the biggest fish in the world along here, but you know, you can usually have a bite or two, which I just wanted to try out those, uh, those, those carp rods, do a bit of zandering with. <laughs> now, I am planning on getting out with the waggler rods down the canal. I'm not sure when. The temperature's quite good on this, this canal, and it was on the Grand Union the other day. So we're certainly, we're sort of low double figures. So that's, that's decent temperature. So I think we'll, we'll get the waggler rod out and we'll perhaps come out and try and cut some hybrid, who knows what, roach, bream. But uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyable this morning. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Tight lines, enjoy your own angling. Many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support. And I'll see you again very soon.